in pain. For instance, with regard to degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis, we know that maintaining weight, that is through proper nutrition and exercise, can help stave off the person developing osteoarthritis of the joints. Assessment is going to vary by the acuity of the pain and also the circumstances. So initially when a pa patient presents and is experiencing severe pain, it may be necessary to tailor the assessment to do it very briefly. And once uh, the pain has begin, begun to subside, at that point the nurse can go and conduct a more thorough pain assessment. Again, this is going to depend on whether the patient is experiencing acute pain versus chronic pain. With regard to pain assessment, one of the mnemonics that I find very helpful in organizing and being thorough with my assessment of a patient's pain is in fact to go and use the PQRS mnemonic. The P stands for what precipitated the pain. We can ask the patient what they were doing when in fact the pain first occurred. In addition, the P can stand for pro provocative and we can also think of this in terms of uh, helping the patient to help identify uh, the event that caused this. With regard to Q, Q stands for the quality of the pain. Patients may need assistance with this in terms of providing those adjectives. Recall that earlier when we talked about acute versus chronic pain that we said that there are different characteristics that describe each type of pain. So you want to ask the patient if in fact the pain is burning, throbbing, gnawing, stabbing. This will help you to determine whether in fact this is a cutaneous pain versus that of being a visceral pain. In addition, the Q may also be associated with regard to quantity. However, this is also better uh, delineated with regard to severity, which we'll discuss here in a moment. The R stands for the region and also for radiation. So again, asking the patient to go and point where the area of pain is at, or you may in fact use an anatomical drawing of the body to determine whether in fact there is referred pain present. An example of this is with regard to uh, inflammation of the pancreas. We know that the pancreas is contained in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen and it is not uncommon for the patient to report that they are having pain in their flank and or even posterior in their mid to low back. With regard to S, S is the severity of the pain or as I said you can also think of this with regard to the quantity. For an adult without cognitive impairments, we frequently use the universal pain scale being 0 to 10. 0 being no pain and 10 being the most or intense pain or the worst pain imaginable. And again, we ask the patient to go ahead and indicate that. Um, in addition, I would at this point indicate not only is it important to determine the severity of the pain, but it's also uh, important that we ask the patient what is a tolerable or acceptable level of pain for them. This is important in terms of establishing the goals and outcomes to be effective in managing the individual's pain. The T finally in this mnemonic stands for timing. So with regard to timing, we want to know in terms of a certain time of day, does this occur, their pain occur with regard to ambulation or mobility, does it occur in relation to meals, et cetera. Again, this is going to help us in terms of determining appropriate and effective pain management strategies. Another type of assessment scale that is available is in fact the McGill Pain Questionnaire. With the McGill Pain Questionnaire, this consists of 20 items, which are broken down into four categories. First is sensory, second is affective, which has to do with the emotional or feeling uh, perception of pain. Next is evaluative, and the last three questions on this 20-item 20, 20 questionnaire deal with the uh, miscellaneous items. <laughs>